Once again, we have been granted as a gift of grace by Bhagwan for chanting His powerful name for one hour in the time of the twilight, the evening twilight. Our grateful pranams to Bhagwan again and again and again. Just think, we could have spent this time anyway. We could have got very busy with this and that. You know, there are one hundred excuses for not being, not participating in this Nama chanting. It's pure grace from Bhagwan. Now, before we submit today's prayers at His lotus feet, let's see one or two incidents of His glory. Once, Sri Pirmal Raju Ayya from Krishnagiri visited Bhagwan at Sanadhi Street House. He had gone to get permission from Bhagwan for attending a function to be held in Pondicherry by Sri Rajamani Kanada. They had invited him. They wanted him to come. So Pirma Raju, he also wanted to go. So he came to take permission. But Bhagwan said, "There is no need for Pirma Raju to go there." And then Bhagwan made him sit there. Soon there was a. Bus load of people coming from Shivakasi, and they were called in. They were on their way to Pondicherry to attend the function. The function again was only to celebrate the glory of Bhagwan Yogi Ram Sarit Kumar, his mission. And they were also releasing a souvenir on the occasion. There were many people invited to give speeches on Yogi Ram Sarit Kumar Bhagwan. So this group was also going, and this is the first time those people had come to have the darshan of Bhagwan. So even as they got down, they were very excited, and they were already singing bhajans. And then, when the gate opened, they began to enter without knowing the discipline that Bhagwan held there. They just crowded into the place and began to sit in any place they chose, any place they got, without waiting for Bhagwan to gesture to them to sit in specific places. There were too many of them. It was a crowd. And they were also singing bhajans loudly. They just simply sat there, looking at Bhagwan, and they started. And they were singing so, so, so loudly that Bhagwan was unable to bear it. Bhagwan, being Bhagwan, of course, wouldn't say very harshly, wouldn't speak harshly. But yet, he was trying to say. Podum, podum, enough, enough, stop it. They just would not listen to him. They were just carried away by the very excitement of the occasion, and they just went on and on and on. Not only because of the way they were seated themselves, because they were singing very loudly, too loudly for Bhagwan. Now, on top of it all, an old man belonging to the group got up, went near Bhagwan, 
and they had brought some grapes. He began to just take it with liberty, he took the fruit in his hand and tried to feed Bhagwan. that. He tried to put it into Bhagwan's mouth, a little forcefully. Bhagwan's face had already reddened because of the way they were singing loudly and because of the way they were all seated here and there, helter-skelter. And now added to it all, this, this devotee was forcing the grapefruit into the mouth of Bhagwan, which nobody, anyone who knew Bhagwan, would not dare. In fact, in those days, Bhagwan was like fire. We would be afraid to breathe loudly in His presence, lest He should ask us to go away. There was such magnetism that pulled us straight to Him that even after spending two hours, when He left us, he would be, we would be just stepping down, going down the steps of His house, and suddenly we would be thinking of coming again. When would we be able to see Him again? When could we possibly come? The mind was so drawn to His presence. Bhagwan had to be very, very strict. And Bhagwan's face became red, the anger was building up in Him, and finally He got up in one jump. And then he said, this beggar is leaving you all, go away. And Pirmar Raju was just looking at the face of Bhagwan and all the reactions, all the expressions that kept changing on his face, how the countenance changed from moment to moment, by the spirit of the occasion. And Bhagwan finally said, Parmar Raju, what to do with these people? And Bhagwan and Parmar, Shri Parmar Raju here was watching Bhagwan, also simultaneously saw the sky. When he came to seek Bhagwan's darshan, the sky was very clear. There was not a single cloud. It was clear and bright. But now, after these people entered with their bhajans and their forceful behavior, Bhagwan was reacting angrily because he had to do his father's work. It is for their greater good that he was insisting upon the discipline. Otherwise, he wouldn't be able to do his work upon them. They would be the losers. Little did they know about all these things. And then to Pirmaradya, it was very strikingly clear the way the sky reacted and the way the expression changed on the face of Bhagwan, were so similar because within minutes there were clouds in the sky and there was thunder, thunderous sound. And then the lightning. And finally these people came out and they stood outside again, continuing their loud singing of bhajans. And Pirmar Raju could have a good look at the sky and he could not help comparing the two and knew that Bhagwan was the cosmos. Every mood of Bhagwan reflected upon the whole cosmos. 
Bhagavan used to say, every look of this beggar, every word he utters, every gesture he makes, every step that he takes, my father's work is getting done for the entire cosmos. When this beggar makes a gesture, it's not the same. When you make, when you do something, it is different. When this beggar does the same thing, it's different. It will have repercussions on the cosmic level. This is what he used to say. So as soon as those people went away, Bhagwan began to smile and he became quiet and so did the sky, the clouds, the, the thunder, the sound stopped and the lightning subsided and the sky became once again clear and there was no strong wind blowing. that Bhagwan is a cosmic being. What more, what more proof do we need? And I have also personally witnessed how His moods reflected upon the atmosphere. I was very happy to read what Sri Pirma Rajwaiya had written. I had experienced it quite a few times. And I remember once Bhagwan came and sat there in the morning in the veranda and suddenly there was such light coming out of him, he looked brilliant, effulgent, such beauty such majesty, such divinity glowing in its infinite glory. How else? A very difficult the words fail us. It, it was a sight for the gods. And I witnessed, I was completely lost. And suddenly, you know, something happened to me. And then I wondered, I had no idea, I had voiced it out. I said, Bhagwan, how beautiful you look. You look so handsome, so beautiful, so divine, so effulgent. Bhagwan smiled, his bewitching smile. And then he said, Devki. Do you think it is the beauty of this body? This body is the body of an old man. You see the beard, white beard. You see the body, this is a body of an old man. You think it's the beauty of this body? It is my father's beauty, Devki. It's my father. There is no one else in this body. It's my father. And then I was completely overwhelmed by the moment, the happening, the moment. And then I burst out with tears. Where have you come from? Who are you? Where have you come from? Again he laughed, he laughed that beautiful, inimitable laughter of his, peals of laughter, cascading, thunderous, uproarious laughter. And he said, from Vaikuntha, and again he burst out laughing. I had no idea what happened to me, it was all too much for me. Like Arjuna stood before the Vishwarupa Darshana of Krishna. Of course, he experienced fear, but here 
It was awe. It was ananda. It was something beyond the spectrum of human emotions. I just gaped at him when he burst out laughing. I burst out crying. I cried out. I had no idea why I should cry out, because it was all ananda, it was bliss. Looking at him the way he did, it was pure bliss. It was beyond any thought, word or deed. But then that's what happened to me, just the opposite reaction. He was here, he was laughing and laughing and laughing, drawing the whole world with him. I'm sure the flowers blossomed everywhere and the entire crea crea creation reacted to that laughter, just as the creation reacted to Krishna's flute. And here all I could do was cry. Tears were pouring. How could anybody describe this divine cosmic being? Though he had two eyes like ours, two ears, the limbs just like ours, he ate like us, he spoke like us, he slept like us. Who could describe the being that he was? Another time, <clears throat> when Sri Pirmal Rajoya had come to Sanadi Street House, this time, the previous time he wanted to go to Pondicherry, he had come only to take permission. Bhagavan made him stay. But this time, he wanted to come and stay at least for two or three days. And here, Bhagwan was talking about death, death of a person. Bhagwan said, some fire accident took place in Tiruvannamala railway station, and Mr. Radha Krishnan, who was feeding him, who used to give food to Bhagwan, he died, and Bhagwan was very sad about it. And then he said. Radha Krishna has died. Pirmal Raju. What to do, Pirmal Raju? He was giving food to this beggar. Now he is gone. What to do, Pirmal Raju? How to take it? Sri Pirmal Raju kept quiet, knowing very well he could not answer it himself, and Bhagwan was playing some Leela. When these things happen, you know, the fire accident or accident by a bike on the road, it's not a good death. People committing suicide, people who die out of accidents, people who get killed, they are called durmarana. They are not good deaths. It spells a certain trouble to the soul after it leaves the body. That's why one should never commit suicide. It is worse than living. They say that the evil spirits would be waiting for such people and it would take years and years before they come out of this situation. They have to be errant boys to these evil spirits. I mean, there are so many things, we would not go into it, but enough to say, because somebody had asked me, what about such deaths? But one thing is, if we are connected with a great soul, a great master like Yogi Ram Sarat Kumar, 
no matter how the death happens, by fire accident or accident on the road or even by suicide, you could be sure that Bhagwan would protect. Bhagwan would do the needful and the protection would be there. Otherwise it's very, very difficult. So we wouldn't go into it. The point is, Bhagwan was saying that somebody has died, someone very, very dear to us, a loved one. How to take it, Pirma Raju? What to do? And here Pirma Raju was wondering why he was talking about this. Anyway, but he knew that Radha Krishna died and Bhagwan was very sad about it. And then Bhagwan kept him till about twelve o'clock in the night. And then he said, Pirmar Raju, this beggar leaves you now. But Pirmar Raju was, had come with the idea of staying with him for two or three days. But here Swami was packing him off. No, Pirmar Raju, this beggar leaves you now, you have to go. So twelve o'clock he came out, he somehow managed to take a bus and reached home at 4.30 early morning. He started at midnight and then somehow he was able to reach home at 4.30 in the morning. As soon as he entered his house, he knew something was wrong. The atmosphere was different. And then somebody came and told him that, the, that his elder brother was not well, very sick, that he was in deathbed. Immediately he rushed there. As soon as he went near, his brother was waiting just for him to come back. And then his brother took Shipirmar Raju's hand, put it on his chest, and then left the body. And then Shipirmar Raju knew why Bhagwan was talking about death of a loved one. Bhagwan said to Shri Pirmal Raju, we have to accept things as Father's will. Even if it's the death of a loved one, we have to accept it because everything happens only by Father's will. And whatever happens is necessary and that's why it's happening. And Father is perfect and therefore whatever happens by His will is also perfect. It is perfect in another scale, not in the scale of human view. Many people would say, why would it happen? Had the soul stayed on with a new lease on life, it would have suffered so much, it would have gone through hell after hell that people would begin to think that his death would have been better. We do not know. Like Bhagavan says, Father knows. It's only when the, the cloth tears, then you throw it away and then put on a new one. So unless the body reaches such condition, this body is made only for this, to work out our karmas. And the minute the mission of life is over, neither one minute earlier nor one minute after, it would happen exactly at the chosen time. Very rare, very, very rare are the exceptions. Raman Maharishi said, Markandeya, was one exception. Adi Shankara was one exception. Very rare beings. So whatever it is, it's better to accept it as God's will and pray for those souls because our prayers will definitely help them in their further path. Our doing Namajipa, our singing the name for their sake, doing puja for their sake and praying for their welfare for an easy journey further would help instead of sitting and crying over that. And of course, 
there are atonements prescribed by the shastras which could be done, which would alleviate the suffering of such souls in their further journey. But if you have taken refuge at the feet of a great master, leave it to him. He will work it out. He will take care. Now to such power, as we saw, how his every mood reflected upon the whole creation, to such a one we shall submit our prayers today. There is nothing Bhagwan does not know, there is nothing that Bhagwan cannot do. It's only by His immediate divine intervention things could be brought under control. We seek a huge grace from Bhagwan to uproot this fear, the panic in the hearts of people and to stop the spread of the disease immediately, to enter some vaccine so that it could kill this virulent virus instantly and totally. We seek Bhagwan's blessings to free the entire humanity from the cruel grip of this terrible virus and bring back normalcy based upon human values. Dharma in every aspect of life, everywhere. And Bhagwan, please protect all those brave soldiers who are in the field against all odds, putting up with difficult situations, fighting the disease at the very risk of their lives. Above all, give us constant remembrance of Your name and the awareness that we are nothing but tools in Your hand and with this we would go about our everyday life. And that to act knowing everything happens only by God's will and whatever happens is necessary for our spiritual growth. Jai Yogi Ram Sutra.